It is day five of the fast. It's day five of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And so we're really still in the early stage here. And this time through, we're just trying some different things like this to say, hey, how can we encourage each other uh, along the way in the 21 days? And much like everything this year, this 21 days is built uh, around um, this, this, our word for the year of awakening and us really saying, hey, God, what are you trying to awaken in me? What are you trying to awaken me to about you and about me and about the, the, the people around me and the world around me? What are you trying to awaken in me? And we want to be real available to that. And again, we've talked about this a lot, but the people in the scriptures who needed the awakenings were people who were in religious environments, which is still really fascinating to me. But that's, that's us. If you're watching this live or you watch this later, uh, you're a person that's willing to engage in something around 21 days of fasting. It's, we are the ones who want to be aware of, hey, where do I need an awakening? Where is God trying to awaken me to more of him? And so 21 days of prayer and fasting really is an attempt to, to lean into that, to say, I'm going to give up some things that necessarily aren't evil in and of themselves, but I'm going to give up some things. I'm going to disconnect from some things of the world. Um, we asked everybody to fast from something of a food element and something in media. And so some people have given up all social media and maybe you're on day five and you're having like TikTok cravings or Instagram cravings or whatever that is, or news cravings or whatever that is. You're giving it up though. And I, pre I celebrate that. I'm really proud of you. I love it. And then a food one. We said, okay, what's the, what's, am I giving up a meal a day? Am I giving up a meal a week? Am I giving up a certain kind of food? And some of you have combined all sorts of those things, maybe a Daniel fast. And there's some of those resources on our website, but we're disconnecting from the world so that we can connect more to Jesus. We're adding our fasting to our prayers and just carving out more time, carving out more intentionality, being willing to remind ourselves my strength and sustenance doesn't come from anything in the world, even food. My ultimate strength and sustenance comes from Jesus. And so on day five here, you, you might be in this early stage of saying, hey, okay, what, what's really happening here? And all I want to do is in a, just for a couple minutes, I want to share with you a little bit of what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing. One thing I'm, I've kind of encountered already and I'm thinking about a lot and praying about a lot. Uh, and then just pray for us. And that's it. So less than 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes max and send you on your way into the day. One of the things I'm doing um, in this 21 days, again, I'm just trying to say, God, what are you trying to awaken in me about you and about me and in us uh, is I just felt really prompted to go back and, and really kind of lock in scripture wise, primarily in the book of Acts and a little bit in Psalms, but primarily in the book of Acts. I'm actually gonna see if I can read through the book of Acts uh, at least a couple times. So I'm trying to take it in big chunks. Uh, can I read through the book of Acts a couple times uh, in these 21 days and just hear from the Lord? And it's already been amazing. And um, I, I wanna just kind of take you back like the beginning of the book of Acts. I don't know if I'll necessarily read a bunch to you, but real early in the book of Acts, we, we get this rally, right? Where Jesus has appeared after his, his death. And then he says to the disciples, hey, I'm gonna send my spirit on you soon and you'll have my power to be witnesses. Uh, all throughout the earth, and he describes these places. One of the things I think is really fascinating there is that after Jesus says, I'm going to send you my spirit, and they've had the disciples have had this moment of, man, we've seen the resurrected Jesus we, multiple times in 40 days. We've seen him, we've seen him, we've seen him. But then they have to go into a period of waiting. And I thought about that a lot in terms of fasting. Here we are in day five, and maybe you're praying for some things, some healing, or you're praying for salvation, hopefully for people that you love. We, we had a big part of that. It's what we're in a series on right now in Luke 15. Like, who are the people that we love? We want them to meet Jesus and we have opportunity with. And maybe we've been praying for them for years. Maybe we've, it's new people in our life. We've been praying through days. But we find ourselves in this period of waiting. Uh, we're waiting for a relational breakthrough. We're waiting for... Uh, we're waiting for a parent or a child to respond to the gospel or to have a restored relationship with us, or we're waiting for a job breakthrough. We're waiting, we're waiting. And on day five of a fast, I'm just already struck by, okay, it's day five and it's early, uh, but we like to see progress. And maybe we're still in this time of waiting, much like the disciples were when Jesus said, hey, go hang out in Jerusalem, don't go anywhere until I send my spirit. And a couple things happen in their waiting. Number one, they, they just keep praying together. They just keep praying together. It says they were united in prayer. There's 120 of them, these early followers, and they just keep praying. There's, there's a persistence in it. While they're waiting for this promised Holy Spirit that they don't fully understand yet, who's gonna completely blow their minds, 
they just keep waiting and they make the decisions they need to make. Uh, there's this window in there where like while they're waiting, um, they elect another disciple to replace Judas, <laughs> right? And so they've gone to 11, now they're gonna go back to 12. And so they're still making decisions. Like there's still movement in the waiting. They're praying and they're moving. And, and I just wanna encourage you early on here, it's only day five, and maybe you got all this momentum, positive momentum, Maybe you're already kind of wishing, God, do a breakthrough, do a breakthrough. Fasting's been hard and I have these cravings and I, I have these longings and maybe maybe the, the, the ceilings feel a little bit like brass and your prayers are coming back to you and it's, it doesn't feel like anything's getting through to God. It's okay. Like there's a, there's a value in this waiting of being persistent, just being persistent, being persistent. Um, let's, let's stay at it. And while we're waiting, let's keep praying and let's make decisions we need to make. If you need to make a decision on something, make it. If you, if you need to have a conversation with somebody, have it. If you need to make a job decision, make it. Like, like we're in this, this mode of saying, okay, waiting, waiting is never wasted. So let's not waste our waiting, okay? Waiting is never wasted. God's trying to do something in it. So let's not waste our waiting by getting too impatient and too frantic and giving up too early. Uh, this, the 21 days, we're in it. We're early, but let's stay fully engaged in it. The other thing I just want to say, if you've already like, oh, I already broke my fast three times in five days and I ate this and I watched it, it's okay. It's okay. There, there, there's a lot of grace. Like we're just trying to lean into Jesus. Just recommit, reestablish, put a stake in the ground again and say, look, I'm just going to disconnect from this stuff of the world so I can connect a little more to Jesus in this. And so I just want to encourage you in the waiting in the waiting and give you just to keep, to keep praying, to do what you need to do. And let me give you one last thing that's going to impact the whole rest of the book of Acts. I've already seen it. Um, I'm 10 or 11 chapters in and already kind of see this overplay. While you're waiting, it's a great chance just to review, where have I already witnessed Jesus in my life? Maybe in the last 30 days, but maybe in the last 30 years. Like sometimes it's like while we're waiting for Jesus, while we're waiting for a breakthrough, we just go back and say, hey, let me go back and kind of witness my own salvation again. Let me go back and just witness a breakthrough again. Let me go back and just recount all the ways I've witnessed God work in my life, from the smallest things to the biggest things, from moments to seasons of time. Because after this period of waiting, when the Holy Spirit comes, the disciples, they just, they, they become these witnesses, right? Power to be a witness. But here's what, here's what they keep doing. They keep telling what they witnessed. They keep telling what they witnessed with Jesus. They keep telling what they witnessed when they had the power of the Holy Spirit. And so it's a great time while we're waiting just to review, what have I already witnessed? What have I already witnessed? What have I already witnessed Jesus do? Because that's the story I'm gonna tell people I love. That's the story I'm gonna tell people that I'm praying for. That's the story I'm gonna tell people one day that I'm trying to bring to Easter. Like I, my part, I'm, Easter's not the end game. Like me witnessing, me just telling what I've witnessed Jesus do, right? That, how do I do that? So just review what you've witnessed Jesus do right? Just review what you do. Keep praying, make decisions you need to make, and just wit review what you've already witnessed Jesus do. And the waiting, and then the rest of these 21 days, and while you're waiting for a breakthrough, and while you're really responding to this awakening. Jesus, I want to be awakened to what you're doing. I want to be awakened to who you are. I want to be awakened to who I am. And part of that is just review what you've already witnessed. Now, again, while we're doing all that, I hope you are praying for people you love. I hope you are leaned in and saying, look, Jesus, you did send your spirit so we could witness to what you've done. I hope you're praying for people you love. I hope you are all the way leaned into saying, who can I bring with me? What's one person or family I can bring with me to an Easter experience at Journey? Who is that? If I'm traveling, who can I invite to join me online? If I'm traveling with people who don't know Jesus, how can I get us together to just experience Journey online on Easter morning? Like there's always a way, there's always a way and want to encourage you just to, be, to, to really grab a hold of that. So I want to pray for us. Uh, again, just want to encourage you in the waiting here in the early days of fasting, but I want to pray for us and uh, then let you kind of get about the day and doing the thing, hopefully with a little bit of encouragement. In the waiting, keep praying. Let's just keep praying. We're in this thing together, all of us in 21 days. Just keep praying. Make decisions you need to make. It's okay. Don't panic. Don't be paralyzed. Make decisions you, you still need to make, much like the disciples did. And then just review what you've already witnessed. Review what you've already witnessed with Jesus. And all that's gonna shape your prayers. It's gonna shape the 21 days. It's gonna shape your prayers for other people. It's gonna shape how you witness. What is, what is the story you tell about what you've witnessed Jesus do in your life? So let me pray for us. Jesus, thank you for inviting us into this 21 days. We're incredibly grateful that you have created ways for us to 
to sometimes just recalibrate, to connect with you a little more deeply. And my prayer is that at the end of the 21 days, we don't just go back to things of old, but that our lives are a little different. Our lives are a little better with you, uh, that we are living a little differently because of what we've experienced with you in a concentrated, focused 21 days. I think that while we're waiting, while we're praying, while we're pushing through, while we're trying to be persistent, I do thank you that none of this waiting is wasted. There's not a prayer that goes unheard or missed or neglected. I thank you. You just don't let periods of time be wasted. So help us not to, to waste the waiting. Help us not to be the people who would waste the waiting, but help us to stay leaned in, to keep praying, to keep encouraging each other in the 21 days, um, to review a little bit what you've already done in our life, to just, again, witness your work in our own lives. I pray that um, for the people of Journey today, that Holy Spirit, you really, truly would, in a tangible way, encourage them for every single person engaged in the 21 days. May today, may day five be a day where you encourage, where you do remind them while they're maybe waiting, their prayers are heard, um, you are looking at them, your face is shining on their face, you are with them in it, uh, you're weeping with those who are weeping right now. You're celebrating with those who are celebrating. You are present. Encourage every individual engaged in these 21 days. Encourage them with that. The reminder of your presence, I pray. Thanks, Jesus. Thanks for all you have for us, for all you're inviting us into, for all you're excited to give us and share with us. We pray these things and I bless these people today. May your blessing and your goodness rest on them and go before them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, uh, it's good. for the Again, for those of you who have jumped on really early in the morning, thank you. For those of you who catch this later, thank you. Um, really looking forward to seeing you on Sunday and then again on Tuesday night for an awakening night. Uh, can't wait for that. Grab some friends and um, just, yeah, make sure you're a part of that. And uh, yeah. I love you, church. Uh, let's keep going. I'll talk to you soon. See you.